Hi guys, sorry about the lighting in here, but it's the best I can do for now. Welcome back to the third video in the series of the Vocal Booth build. I've been very, very busy. I've had little time to do some editing, but now it's making good progress. I can actually do some editing. So here's the third one and it's quite a long one, but there's a lot of good stuff in it. It's definitely worth watching. There's quite a few bits in there that are funny. There's a few emotional bits and also you'll learn something from it. So stick around till the end. Make sure you subscribe, click the like, and let's get straight into the action. First off, guys, I just wanted to show you a picture I found on my computer of the underside of the bass. I know I had one somewhere and eventually came across it the other day, which is awesome. This shows the complete bass with the foam in place and the protective sheet. The next one shows how it looks on the floor. All right. So now I've got my first wall up on the base and I'm trying to get it into position so I can bolt it down. I had a little bit of trouble getting it flush up against the base due to the carpet. And that seems to be due to the fact that the carpet is actually nailed down and it's overhanging a little bit. So therefore I can't quite pull the wall in close enough. I tried to fiddle it around a little bit back and forth side to side, but it wasn't really doing the trick. So I tried to get my head into this and wobble it a bit, but that wasn't really quite flying. So I'll pass you over to myself on the ground who will take you through it. All right, that's what I'll do, let's figure this out. And the carpet's nailed down, so I think I need to take the nails off and let the carpet loose so it can move this in more. It's not coming fish to the edge for some reason. You can probably get the idea of its weight by how difficult that was. Taking the nails up now, I've got a little nails in various places. If I can take up. Why are you doing this? Well, I'm doing this because I think the carpet needs to move, and with the nails holding it in place. It's not able to move, so therefore I can't get this flush up against that side before I bolt it down. So I need a bit of flexibility in the carpet to be able to move. So I'm just going to take up all the little tackings, tacking nails that I put in. And then we should be free to move. the idea anyway. So I think now I think now with the carpet loose I should be able to fit this into place so maybe the carpet will move this way a little bit as needed so I can have it flush against this piece here so then I can bolt I can then bolt through here I can bolt through here through the carpets into the base and that should hold it in place. All right, so let's get it back. Back into position. Like that. If I get off it, That seems better. It doesn't look like it's actually moved very much, but it seems to be better. Okay, so I'll just nudge this along a little bit to here. So that that's flush. Something like this. Take this 
It's flush there, ready for my next piece to go on. So I should be able to, yeah, that's, that's better. I should be able to just pull that in, bolt it down, and pull that side in as well. And that'll be that. So that's quite safe like that. The bolts I'm using are basically heavy duty timber fixings which are 100, 100 mil long and you fix them on with a hexagonal uh, bolt fit which comes with the, the screws when you buy them that's pretty hardcore heavy duty stuff and that just fits into your drill so you just take that off put that in ready for action I think uh, England only needs to drill a pilot hole first. So I'm going to crack all the wood. Just a little pilot hole first. I think I have the torque setting quite high on the drill just to make sure it goes all the way down. I'm going to set it up to 16. Alright, and then I'm going to need to pull. <coughs> yeah, just drill that through the wood a bit first. And then I need to pull this in like that. Yes, I can. I think I just killed the drill. But uh, that went in. Good. And that's nicely flush against the back, and I can use that as a pivot to then pull this side in. Okay. Got another pilot hole. Let's see if it can stand. Let's see if the drill can stand another bounce like that. If not, I have to get another battery. I need to pull it in. Not bad. But it needs to go a bit more. So I need another battery. Okay, so I have a new battery, so now I'm going to try and squeeze that in a little bit more. There we go, nice job. Oh yeah. See that squeeze down a little bit? That's good. Okay, so the only thoughts I'm having at the moment is the fact that this screw is bolting straight down into the base. Now you can see that the base is a floating floor because it's on these U-boats. But now that I'm bolting straight into the base, it means any shock wave that gets into this wood from somewhere could always trans transmit through this bolt and into this frame. And the frame is then not necessarily floating, even though it is sitting on. If you look at this flooring here, I have a What's called like, I think it's a noise stop floor. It's got a a rubber in there, which is a, a you know a soundproof piece of vinyl plus two kind of underlays, 
and then I actually ran out of this stuff for my little corner section here so I just basically had some off cuts for my own which I stuck to the bottom and then put another layer of carpet underneath which basically kind of makes that flat so I'm thinking whether that's kind of made the walls also floating uh, but now that I'm putting these screws in it it might be taking away that bloatism if that is such a word so I'm thinking well how can I get around that um, I do have somewhere I think here we go got these little little rubber discs you could maybe just uh, place these on there like that you see something like that but I might need to drill a little pilot through those first let's just see I don't know it might have a benefit I'm not sure but I'm just going to drill a little pilot like that and then I'm going to bolt this panel in if that's what I could do is I could just put them on I could screw them on a little bit like this and then put that on there that battery didn't last long might have to do might have to resort to manual labour can't believe that Well, I guess it's just going a long way and it's cutting into unpiloted wood. So. Uh, sheesh. Alright. Need a better drill with more juice. Preferably an electric one, maybe. But anyway, that's what I've got for now. Uh, the only other suggestion I can think of is I'm going to have to pilot the hole a bit, a bit deeper. So I'm going to have to go to the garage and get uh, a bigger drill with a bigger hole. So I'll see you back in a minute. So I have a, a bigger drill for a bigger pilot. So I'm going to take this bolt out now if I can. Nice. So as you can see, the rubber's useless. <laughs> it's just squeezed up outside the edges. So really, I should probably use something like Dalrin, but I can't be bothered with that. So just take those off. too many shots through this floor. But I'm going to have a base trap in the booth anyway so if there are any base, low frequency bases coming through then the base trap should hopefully soak up that, soak up that base. You know and that's why the, that's why the booth is also designed in this fashion, it's not square, it's got a little angle on it like that and that is so that any standing waves that might form as, as a result of it being square won't form because the sound wave has nothing to, to bounce straight back on from. So it will come from this wall, bounce to that wall, bounce to this one. So because of that design, you can never get a standing wave in the room. 
because it's not symmetrical. If it was symmetrical, which I see a lot of booths are, um, what happens is the, the sound wave will come this way, bang, hit the wall, come back that way, bang, hit that wall, come back that way, and then eventually you get a standing wave sitting in the, in the middle of the roof, which is not what you want. So that's why good booths are designed like this. All right, so now I'm gonna put on the second piece of wall. Hopefully. Same idea. Now this, obviously it's freestanding right now. Fortunately, leaning that way towards the wall, so the wall is holding up, right? So I don't need to worry about it falling over. And then I've got this wall over here, which I need to carry over to here. Now, if you come and have a look here, you'll see that it's wider from the stud wall to the edge. And same on this side, it's wider from the stud wall to the edge because I have to cover this space because the stud is only going to go up to here but I've still got this here which I need to cover and it's going to be the same on the other end here as well so my wall that I've just built is going to be that wide but the outside wall needs to be wider that's the theory okay so let's get into position Bloody heavy. I don't know how much this weighs exactly, but I've carried lighter things. So, it's on the lip, which is good, so now I need to push it along like this. So you can see the car for it's kind of uh, wanting to squeeze up there a little bit, a bubble. So I need to somehow pull it from this side and release that. But with 50 kilograms or more of weight on it, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. But anyway, one can but try. I took the watch off, just get in the way. Don't need to count any steps just yet. Lift this and pull that, which is a waste of time. All right. I just lift it and edge it in, which is why it did. Looks like we've now lost, pretty much lost that bubble. And, you know, due to the position in the room, I can't get around the other side, so I've had to think of how am I going to bolt this together. And uh, it's still a good question. a very good question.
because really I'm going to need to bolt in through this stud into that wall and to do that I need to lose this piece of wood which is really annoying because I've got two fixing bolts here two fixings at the end but I'm going to have to do that because I need to somehow fix this to that and I can't go in from the other side because I can't get behind it so we live and learn as we go along don't we so that's what I'm going to have to do because I can't I can't bolt through this so I need to get this off so that's the next thing to do Going back to the floating floating wall idea and the fell of those little rubber things didn't work. Um, somebody else had a fantastic idea, which was to use some cutoffs from my 5mm thick rubber lining here and use that instead, because that's probably not going to be as weak as the other stuff. So I've just drilled a pilot hole through it and now I'm going to put that on and it could offer some kind of insulation. Well, you never know. Could be alright. It's something, isn't it? And maybe I could double up. What do you think? Okay, so as you can see, when I tried one piece, it still wrapped itself up and you know it kind of came up and around. So I don't really know how thick underneath the bolt was, you know, the, the gap between the, 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 the wood and the bolt. I don't know how much thickness was there to actually provide any isolation. So I'm going to double up. So I've cut two smaller pieces, which uh, should hopefully be, you know, just about the size of the head. And I think with doubling it up, it might provide me with some insulation, isolation. So I've just drilled a hole through one. I'm just going to drill a pilot through the other, like so. Okay, and now to test the theory. Okay, so we've got two here like that get it on there and down we go okay so I think that'd be alright you know because like with two on there it's going to give me maybe you know five mil of isolation so cool hundreds i'm happy with that and it's still a tight fit so we could do that on the other ones okay so We've got some isolation there, haven't we? Yeah. All right, so there we have it. Still got the three bolts in, and then they've got probably a little bit of insulation in there. Isolation, I should say, which is probably better than nothing. No, so now that essentially could make it into a floating wall as well. So every bit helps, doesn't it? All right. So now I've got this problem of trying to sort out attaching this wall to that wall. That's the next thing. So I've pulled. I've now gotten rid of this extra bit of wood that we had in place, which prevented me from getting my drill in there. 
So I've taken that out and now I've put the board in place as you can see and I've pulled it forward so that the um, so that the place here at the back is up against this stud here. And I've temporarily I pulled it forwards and I put a quick little tacking screw in there just to hold it in place because I want to use that as like a pivot so I can pull it in on the bottom to make sure the bottom is flush as well. Okay, so now I'm going to just pull it from the bottom. Let's try and make sure it's, it's up there. Simply. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's really for bolts. Why your there. head is red? <laughs> so it's the pressure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> so now we can get down to bolting this into place. But I think I need to do a little pilot first. find the hole. And the magic. Next battery. Okay, good, fantastic, much awesomeness, <coughs> and now for the next, next couple of holes, pull that in, best I can. Might be better if I'm not sitting on it, to be fair. See that go down? That's awesome. Okay, cool. So now here, because it's like a main joint, I still want to use these bolts. But I bought some shorter ones, 75 millimeter ones, rather than 100 mil. So, I think we'll use these on there. <clears throat> so I'm going to drill my pilots first. I think I want to stick one. Uh, let's start from the bottom. That's on here. Down there, there's already, a, there's already a hole there. I think that's when I was doing a testing. in the middle. I'm going to do it at an angle, slightly. Manual wrench 
as well, just to tidy it up in case the drawer doesn't quite do the job. So I can tidy it a little bit more here. I can feel it, make sure it doesn't pull the thread out of the wood as well. So there we go. That's those two walls in there. So there we are. That's those two. My only little concern is that this, this wall here is overlapping by about 5mm which might become a bit of a problem when I come to put on the other piece. But uh, no, I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, so the next one is I've got a piece to go here, which I just need to fit in there. Get my ball drawer out of the way. So there we go. And then uh, once that piece is on, <coughs> I'm gonna look at building into this piece here uh, an inlet, an air inlet for the ventilation system. I'm thinking there's going to be like a, a hole on the outside, a square hole with a filter on the front and then inside it's going to zigzag down a little uh, tube, little, like little box I'm going to make and then at the bottom will be a hole on the inside of the booth which will pull in the air from there. Now what's going to pull in the air? It's going to be a fan. The fan is going to need to pull air from the top. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> but I'm working on a few ideas. Okay, but anyway, that's later. For now, I need to get this extra piece in, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, good, so I've, got no, I've now got those two panels on. Now I've got this third panel which I made more recently and now I just need to fit some pretty much in the same way. So here we go. The only thing I'll notice is that the carpet is starting to kind of go out of shape a little bit. So I'll have to fix that as I go along. At least the more worries at the moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift this here. You so the lip is over the edge. And then to lean that up against the wall. As you can see, the carpet is being a bit naughty, so I'm just going to pull this, pull this flat like that, keep my weight on there, and then push this in. And obviously, this still needs to come forward a bit, so the carpet plane as well. So that's that there. Maybe if I just kind of walk it in a little bit like that, give it a, give it a push. Yeah. Spot on, mate. Whew. That's not bad measurements. Look at that. Actually, fits quite flush on the edge there as well. Just here, it's quite quite flush, which I'm happy about. So that's good. All right, so now this is ready to fix in place. It looks higher, but once the bolts have gripped it, then we should be good. It should take it down that distance because of the thickness of these different carpets on the actual floor. So I'll draw my pilots, you know the drill by now. Pun intended. Okay, so I'm going to draw one in here. Now I'm thinking it might be an idea first to actually just bolt those in place, to be honest. So we should probably do that if we pull it in as well. So let's drill a little fixing here 
I'm happy with that placement, so we can just go straight in here, pretty much anywhere. Good. I'm drilling a 5mm pilot hole. Just if you're interested. mils into there is more than enough probably not really necessary so I'll go for 75 actually seventy five and there yeah, that should be enough yeah okay so I'm just gonna charge up my screw here Good, that's that, and then I forget my little ratchet. You can see that that's squeezing the gap up there a little bit more. Like I say, I don't want to, I don't want to pull the thread, so I've got to be careful. I think that'll do. I mean, unfortunately, because of the position I've got to build this and I can't get behind it, I actually don't know what the join is like on the other side between the two between the two woods. So all I can assume is that I've done a good job and there's not too much of a gap. But fortunately, you know, the wall is there, so that can act also as a kind of a soundproof barrier to some degree. But you know got to just cope with the circumstances that you're in as best you can so let's put a put one in here fine and I'll put another one in here notice I didn't double up on this one because um, here I made probably a bit of an error here I didn't necessarily need to put this because the idea of this is to create a corner on a square so that you can actually build and, and fit your extra, well you can build corners on squares in that case with this design, which is an idea that I got off on the internet. But I built this before I thought of this extra bit and uh, it might not necessarily be needed. Now, I just had another idea, because these ideas are coming thick and fast, and that is, if I bolted that into there, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to bolt this down to the same level, so I need to take this out now. So, you can see I'm winging this. I'm just going to screw it in here. Hopefully that's going to bring it down a bit. Don't bring it down any. Not a great deal, which is a bit unfortunate. So I don't know what's happened there. I mean, I guess the difference is, you see, is because I've got this hard carpet here instead of this, because obviously this will squeeze down, whereas this is ne not going to necessarily squeeze down as much. So that could be the problem. It's just unfortunate. I was going to buy another piece of this, but it would have cost me. Uh, something like just for one piece of this to be shipped it was going to cost me another 50 quid and I didn't really want to do that I, I should have just bought an extra one when I bought the whole uh, when I bought the whole lot because then it could have just been included in the pallet of materials that came but unfortunately I didn't and oh no I've got a massive gap here so that's bad Probably need to re-drill that all down there. Okay, so that needs to be tied like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's 
better. Still a bit of a gap there, but is that going to be okay? So the good news is, having put in the 100mm, it's the 100 mil bolt, it's squeezed it down and it's made it pretty much level with the rest. So that's good news. I'm glad I saw that. So now I'm going to just bolt these together and that'll be my job done for today. The sun's just come out so I can go out and have a nice cold beer overlooking the beautiful English countryside somewhere. So why the hell not? There we go. Okay good, so now I'm going to draw the other holes. Obviously I draw the pilots so that the wood doesn't crack. Because it would be an awful shame to have the stuff cracking on me. Of course, now I've got that one in the bottom, it's playing hard to get, so I have to undo it a little bit. Just to give me a little bit of flexibility up here, I think. Maybe just need a bit of brute force. Drill the hole, right? No, not yet. Alright, so I think Okay, I'm basically just gonna drill a hole here. I've got a hole here, I'll have one there, and I'll have one there. And then I'll put it all together. But I'm gonna need a hand to do that because I need somebody to actually hold the wood like this while I drill it and I can't do that on my own so I'll see you in a minute good so I just got it in put the bolts in and just tidying up a little bit now even if on the other side there is a little bit of a gap there's not really much of a gap here anymore so sand is not going to get through that and the only way it is going to get through is if somehow it comes through the window bounces along the ceiling and goes down the side and then comes in through there which for a straight wave is going to be pretty difficult so I'm pretty confident that that should be okay but I could be wrong but I don't think sand is going to get through there anytime soon. All right, so that's that's me done for the day. I've got my three panels on. I'm not going to put the foam in yet. My next job is to build this side piece where my ventilation intake is going to be. And then I've already made this piece, which will go here. Um, but I'm undecided about putting it on yet because I've somehow got to get the roof on and as you can see there's not a lot of space I thought there was going to be a bit more but not a lot so um, I might need to kind of have have it in here without this piece on have this piece on and then lift it over onto the top just the wood and then um, fix it in place and then I could slide that piece in and then slide this piece in because otherwise if I've got this piece in here I don't think I'm going to have enough space to actually lift the roof on and I need to think about how I'm going to build the roof because obviously it's going to be heavy and I want to make it as light as possible to put on so the roof will be on here um, you'll have the, 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 the rubber on 
and then <clears throat> might have to fix it on with screws because the green glue is good but this stuff's too heavy to hold it it's okay in this position but to have the weight of itself pulling on the glue it's, it's not strong enough so I might need to screw the the, the sealing rubber on which I'm not too happy about because then that means you're breaking the uh, you're breaking the soundproof seal. But you know, what can you do? I'll have a look on the internet and see how anybody else did it. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm going to tidy up and then uh, enjoy the rest of my weekend. So see you next time. Mm -hmm.